So it's always a very exciting time of year for me when I manage to get my grubby little mitts on a brand new version of the Raspberry Pi. And as you can see here in my hands, I've got two, count them, of the brand new Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. Now at the time of recording this video, it's uh, Wednesday late afternoon, these only got announced and released on Monday morning, and I was pretty amazed that I managed to log on to uh, CPC, one of their distributors websites, at lunchtime on Monday, and was able to order two of these straight away. As if you've ever ordered a Raspberry Pi before, usually the way it goes down is, they announce it at like 9 a.m. on a Monday morning, and then by 9.30, everybody's bought the entire stock, and you've got a six to eight week waiting time for the next batch to get made. Although, Element 14 and the Raspberry Pi Foundation have said, this time around, they've manufactured a lot more of the initial run uh, in an attempt to meet demand. And like I said, I got it at midday on Monday, and a CPC's website said they still had a good few thousand left in stock. I've even read on forums today that there are still online retailers where you can still get Raspberry Pi 3 stock even now like two days later. So props to those guys for realizing the big demand of making enough of them this time around. Now the Raspberry Pi tends to get a major upgrade every 12 months it seems to be at the moment. Uh, I did a video on the Raspberry Pi 2 about a year ago as now. But I've got to say this time around the Model 3 probably represents the biggest increase in performance and features that the Raspberry Pi has seen to date. Now in a moment I'll give you an unboxing and talk you through the performance enhancements and the new onboard features of the Raspberry Pi 3. But I just want to quickly answer one question that is the most common question I get asked about the Pi and that is, I'm interested in it but what on earth can I do with it? Now I've got two of these. One of them is going to live in my living room as a media center. So there's a thing called Kodi that you might know as um, XPMC it was called before that lets you not only stream media from the internet, video, audio, all that kind of thing, but also you can do it from your local area network as well. So I've got a six terabyte network attached storage device and I can stream my Blu-ray and uh, DVD collection that I've ripped to the hard disk in full HD quality uh, via my local area network to the Raspberry Pi on Kodi. Now I've currently got one in my bedroom and one in the living room already of the older models of the Raspberry Pi. So that's gonna be one of them. Uh, the other one will probably be used for um, I'm thinking of repurposing it as kind of a Twitter client, which might sound a bit weird. But I, I love Twitter, but the thing is, I generally open TweetDeck on my PC or in a browser, minimize it, and then forget to look at it all day. So what I think I'd like to do is have like a screen mounted on the wall and have a dedicated Raspberry Pi that will basically just be a, a Twitter ticker. So it'll just scroll by all day with the latest tweets. So I can just glance up and kind of get a, an overview of what's going on right now. So that'll be kind of cool. And uh, these boards are very cheap. Now, I will say I got mine for £27, and they retail at $35 American dollars. So these are very low cost, uh, pretty decent performance for the price, single board ARM microcomputers. Now, they run on the ARM uh, architecture, which is probably the same as your cell phone does, most of them do. And uh, people use these for all kinds of things, like I said, media centers, uh, fans of my channel might be interested in a project called at RetroPie, which is an emulation suite. And with the performance boost that you get on this, a lot of people are saying that you can emulate up to the 32-bit generation just fine. You know, stuff like the N64 and the Dreamcast emulation is apparently pretty smooth on these. Obviously, you've got stuff like the old arcades, MAME, the Amiga, the 8-bit machines as well. So these make really small portable pretty powerful emulation suites. I've seen guys using them for like home automation, um, stock tickers to keep an eye on the stock market. Even people put them in like drones and use them as onboard computers. And with the performance boost that you get on the Raspberry Pi 3, it's kind of getting to the stage now where you can use it as a day-to-day, -day, very low-cost computer. Now, obviously, it's not going to replace my Core i7 16 gigabyte PC behind me that I use for, you know, HD video editing. But for stuff like Facebook and web surfing and word processing and email and that kind of thing, um, you know, get a keyboard and a mouse and a monitor and you've pretty much got a nice day-to-day -day computer system for under £100. So let's have a little look at the Raspberry Pi 3. I'll give you a little setup guide if you're going to look at getting one and show you a bit about what you can do with it. But first of all, let's do a quick unboxing. And here are my two Raspberry Pi 3 Model Bs. Now these just came in the post this morning, so what we'll do is a quick unboxing of one of them and I'll show you what's included in the basic package. There's not really a lot to it really, so you get the main Raspberry Pi itself. Uh, and also a little bit of documentation, but it's just, you know, terms and conditions and that kind of thing. There's not really a lot to it really, so it comes in this anti-static bag here, uh, which we'll quickly take it out of. Uh, 
and that is the Raspberry Pi itself. Now it comes as a bare circuit board. It doesn't come with a power supply, a keyboard, or uh, even a case. You've got to provide all that yourself. Although I will show you something quickly. This is my Raspberry Pi 2 that I did a video about last year. If you want to watch that, I'll put a link in the video description. But I've actually opened this up. So if we pop the, uh, the case open quickly, let's push this out the bottom. You will see that the Raspberry Pi 2 and 3 actually use the identical same port layout. Everything is in the same place. So that means that you can use the same case that you had on your Raspberry Pi 2 on your Model 3, which is very handy because usually you've got to wait for like third party companies to, you know, make cases for it weeks and weeks after the initial ones come out. Although this time around, the Raspberry Pi Foundation have got an official case, of which I've ordered two of those, but um, they're all out of stock at the moment. I've got to wait about a month. So in the meantime, I'll be putting my three in the same case that my two lived in. So we'll just pop that to one side quickly and we'll have a look at the board itself. Now, obviously, if the port layout is the same as the 2.0, the connectors are all pretty much identical. So we have four USB 2.0 ports here. I have noticed a lot of people bitching on the forums going, oh, by now it should be USB 3.0, surely. The thing is, I did mention before, this is a £27 board. It's designed to be very low cost. Unfortunately, at the time of release, 3.0 is just too expensive. You know, it's above the pay grade for this board here. And maybe, you know, in 12 months from now, the price will come down and you might get USB 3.0 on the Raspberry Pi 4 12 months from now. But at the time of this, they can only afford to put USB 2 on here. And that really for this machine, USB 2 is absolutely fine. You've got an Ethernet connector here too. There is an all-in-one uh, video and audio analog port there, 2.5mm um, jack. We have a full-size HDMI connector there, a micro USB that's used for powering the board. Underneath there, there is a micro SD card slot that's used for your storage for the system, put your operating system on, that kind of thing. We have some GPIO pins here for connecting external hardware, and also we have the camera and the uh, digital serial interface here too. Now, these remain unchanged from the Raspberry Pi 2 as well, so any camera or external hardware that you had should you know, work completely fine with all these connectors. They're identical to the last machine. Now, if we spin it on its side, I'll talk you through some of the performance increases on the Raspberry Pi 3. Now, most of the work is done by this um, system on a chip here. This has got the CPU and the GPU on board. Now, this machine is actually the first Raspberry Pi that comes clocked above one gigahertz out of the box. The Raspberry Pi 2 had a quad core 900 megahertz CPU. This has got a 1.2 gigahertz CPU on board here. Now, you might be thinking that's only like, what, a 300 megahertz gain? The thing is, though, architecturally, it's been upgraded. The old machine used a Cortex A7, and this one has got a Cortex A53 on board. So that means it's now a full 64 bit CPU. So not only do you get that 300 megahertz um, improvement, but also the architecture is a lot faster too so you should see some quite nice performance increases over the last model uh, and also the uh, GPU has been upgraded as well now it's still the same Broadcom Video Core 4 uh, but in the Raspberry Pi 2 that's clocked at 250 megahertz in this it's nearly double that 400 megahertz and it's dual core now too and these machines are actually very easy to overclock there have been reports of people running these on the subreddit at 1.45 gigahertz without any cooling, which I will say straight away, that is a very brave or maybe stupid thing to do. As uh, there is a user on Reddit, his name is uh, Galif Cree, uh, Galif Cree, I hope I've pronounced that right, probably not, but he has done some thermal imaging of the Raspberry Pi 3. And even with the CPU on high load and the GPU doing nothing, he's reported that this system on a chip here gets as hot as 100 degrees Celsius. So it reaches boiling point. So I will say, if you're going to use your same case it used on the Raspberry Pi 2, or you're going to do any overclocking, I'd advise you have a well-ventilated case, or some users have been adding, adding heat sinks to it, or maybe even a fan, a little mini fan connected to the GPIO ports to get voltage. So I will say, do that at your own risk. You do not want to fry this machine, and by the sounds of it, it runs a lot warmer than the previous models of the Raspberry Pi. Now, if you flip it over, um, whereabouts is it? There we go. Be very careful with that because it is fully exposed and it is quite easy to scratch and damage it apparently. But now the Raspberry Pi 3 has onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which is, you know, a godsend if you want to do stuff like a media center. Before I needed to have a USB to Wi-Fi dongle uh, using one of the USB ports and apparently the performance on the onboard one is uh, almost double or triple what you get on the USB ports. 
So uh, it, you don't need an antenna or anything like that. It's all taken care of on the onboard chips. And apparently it works well even, you know, through walls and all that kind of thing. So no external antennas needed. And you do get some pretty good performance off the Bluetooth and the onboard Wi-Fi. So that is another really nice improvement that we've got the Ros with the Raspberry Pi Model 3. The RAM's also had quite a nice speed upgrade too as well. Um, it still uses DDR2, one gigabyte of memory, but the Raspberry Pi 2 had 450 megahertz RAM. This has now got 900 megahertz as well. So some very nice performance um, increases on the Raspberry Pi 3, I've got to say. I haven't tried it out yet, but you know the benchmarks look pretty good on the Raspberry Pi Foundation's website. Now, I will talk you through a couple of the things that you will need to run your Raspberry Pi. So you'll need a power supply. I've got a couple here. And these are just standard tablet and cell phone adapters. This one here is from a Samsung Galaxy S5, and this is an iPad uh, power supply from my old iPad 3. Now they are saying on the Raspberry Pi Foundation website, they recommend that you use a 2.5 amp adapter, um, a bit more power than the previous Raspberry Pi 2, but only if you wanna run some power hungry USB devices, like you know spinning external hard disks and that kind of thing. From what I've read, you can still get away with using a uh, 2.1 or 2.0 amp uh, 5 volts power supply and it works just fine. Um, there are even people that are using slightly higher um, voltage power supplies. The Raspberry Pi does have uh, protection circuitry on the 5 volt input rail, but you know, do that at your own risk I'd say. You'll also need a standard USB connector here. Again, it's the one from the Samsung Galaxy phone, which should work just fine. And also you need some storage as well. Now I'm going to put a 16 gigabyte uh, SanDisk Ultra micro SD card in here, which will, um, as you can see, it's very small. That will go into the SD card slot on the bottom of the Raspberry Pi there, and that will have the operating system and uh, everything that I want to run on the machine on it. So what I'll do now is we'll hop onto the PC, I'll show you quickly how to get this set up, and then we'll have a look at the Raspberry Pi in operation. So the first thing you'll want to do is get your SD card set up for using on your Raspberry Pi. Now, I will just say, do not use the inbuilt formatter on Windows OS 10 or Linux. What you'll want to do is give the SD card a proper format with the SD card formatter. This will ensure that you get to use all of the um, storage space that's available on it and uh, Windows doesn't put its own file system on, all that kind of thing. So the website you need to go to is the SD Card Association. I'll pop a link to this in the video description, but if you just Google for SD Card Formatter, you should find it just fine. Um, I've downloaded the version for Windows, which I've got open behind here. Now, it should select your SD card um, by default, but you might just want to check the drive letter is... Um, <laughs> the SD card, don't format your hard disk or anything like that. And then it will uh, show you the amount of size that you've got available, which sounds about right, 14.4. Do a quick format on there. As you can see, it did it really quickly. It tells you now that it's all set up in the available space, 15.5 uh, gigabytes uh, or bytes available. So that is now good to go. Now what you need to do next is hop onto the uh, Raspberry Pi Foundation's website raspberrypi.org, click on the downloads button here and it will give you the options for operating systems that you can download. For example, you might want to try uh, you know, Risk OS or Ubuntu Mate, all of this kind of thing. The easiest way to do it though is to use the Noobs installer. Now what this does is it gives you a very simple to use um, UI when you first boot up your Raspberry Pi and lets you select which operating system you'd like installing. So I've actually downloaded that already. All you need to do is download the zip file by clicking that or the torrent if that's your preferred method. I've got it on my desktop here. So what we'll do is uh, right click extract all. Drag it over to this monitor. Um, and we'll change that to the J drive, the SD card. You just wanna literally extract the contents of that zip file into the root of your SD card. It will take it a couple of minutes, but when it's done, put the SD card into your Raspberry Pi and power up. Okay, now we have the first power on of my Raspberry Pi 3, and it has recognized the SD card, which is all good. And it will do a little bit of work here. And this is actually a lot quicker than it was on my Raspberry Pi 2 already. I remember that took a good, like, 20 or 30 seconds on there. Now, I've actually got a USB um, adapter plugged in with a wireless Logitech mouse and keyboard. As you can see, it has recognized it already, which is very cool. Although the version of Noobs I downloaded only had Raspbian on the SD card, which as you can see is already there. Uh, usually it will give you a list of all the other operating systems you can download and install, but as you can see their Wi-Fi networks appears to be ghosted out. So it's looking like it hasn't initialized the onboard Wi-Fi. Maybe this version of Noobs um, that only came out well, about a week ago, maybe it's not quite built for the Raspberry Pi 3 yet. So what I'm going to do at this stage is uh, hook up an Ethernet cable and give it a reboot, then hopefully we can get the Wi-Fi working uh, when everything's all set up. 
Yeah, so I've just hooked up an Ethernet cable and give it a reboot, and as expected, all of the uh, different operating systems are now available. I've done a little bit of research online quickly, and apparently um, it's not quite supported from noobs yet, so you've got to download the OSs and then do updates, and hopefully the Wi-Fi should be enabled then. So it depends which operating systems you want installing on here. Now, I've got um, it tells you the available um, amount on your SD card of storage. I'll have Raspbian, uh, that's the Linux distribution. Open Elect 2, um, which is for the Pi 2 at the moment, it says. Um, obviously, there isn't a Pi 3 version available just yet, so we'll go with that for now. And there are some others that you might be interested in. Um, Risk OS is kind of fun to play with, so see if we've got room for that as well. So that means you can um, try boot here. You can probably have as many of these as you want, I'd imagine. And it just gives you a option of boot as to which operating system you want to use. So I'll go with those three for now, and uh, it will download them off the internet. It'll take a few minutes to install, and then we'll come back when it's all finished. Right, so about 15 minutes later, all three OSs have been downloaded and installed. So if I click OK, um, as you can see here, we get a list of OSs we'd like to boot from. So we'll try Raspbian. And then we should be able to do an upgrade of the OS on the SD card and hopefully get the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth working. And a few moments later, you'll land in the RasBMC default desktop. Now, the first thing you'll want to do to make sure that you're fully up to date is open the terminal uh, from the menu bar here and just type in sudo apt-get update. And that will then connect to the uh, Raspberry Pi repositories and just download the current versions of the OSs and libraries and everything. And again, this will take a couple of moments to download. And after that, you'll want to type in sudo apt-get and then upgrade. Just say yes to the prompts. So the upgrade took around 10 or 15 minutes. I've since removed my Ethernet cable and rebooted the Raspberry Pi, and voila, up in the title bar there, we do have Wi-Fi available. Now, uh, I've already associated it with my home network. I am two rooms away from my router, so um, that kind of is moving between two and three bars of strength. Um, but it should be pretty usable, I imagine. We'll just have a quick look at the OS here as well. Uh, even checking out, you know, file browsing and that kind of thing. On the original Raspberry Pi, you'd actually see the Windows redrawing. <laughs> it struggled that much. Uh, so we have a few programs that are bundled with this. There is a, should be an app store on here as well, if we have a little look. Raspberry Pi resources, let's try that. Oh, this is actually the official Raspberry Pi website. But we're opening the uh, web browser here as well, so even the speed of that is pretty decent. I remember on the first Raspberry Pi, it wasn't really usable for this kind of thing. It was too slow, but looking at this, you know, you can do... Just type google.com or something. That'll do it. Yeah, I mean, it's not as quick as, a, you know, a Core i5 or i7 PC, but for day-to-day -day web browsing, this speed feels pretty acceptable. And we have other things included too, like there is a LibreOffice uh, included here. Uh, so we'll open Writer. There we go. Type anything. And the CPU meter in the corner, you know, it's only hovering around 2% CPU usage. Whereas before that often like averaged around 70 or 80 most of the time. So, yeah, it's more than usable for, you know, just basic computer use, I'd say. Uh, what else have we got in here? There's normally Minecraft included. There we go. Minecraft Pi. Uh, create new. And yeah, that, you know, that runs nicer than it did on the previous machine, too. And this comes bundled with uh, Raz BMC for free, so that's pretty cool. If you're a Minecraft fan, I'm sure lots of kids buy them just to play this. So that's been a quick look at um, Raz BMC. Obviously, feel free to install it and play around with whatever you like. I'm now going to put my Raspberry Pi in my living room and get Cody set up on it. So I've got the Raspberry Pi 3 set up in my living room now with a couple of USB adapters, one for my uh, wireless mouse and keyboard and another one so I can use a Windows Media Remote with it, which will be useful for controlling Kodi. 
Now, unfortunately, the version of Kodi that was supplied with the Noobs installer didn't work on my Raspberry Pi 3. Um, luckily, they have just released a new update of it this week that I did a manual install of, and as you can see, it's working just fine here. So I'll pop a link to that in the video description. And at the moment, I'm going onto my um, local network attached storage drive and just indexing all the movies and TV shows and actually even downloads all the artwork from uh, IMDB, which is very useful. And even with that quite processor intensive task, you can see I can still play a movie without stutter or lag or anything. So yeah, it definitely does feel a lot more responsive than my Raspberry Pi 2. I've got to say, very impressed with it then. That's been a look at the Raspberry Pi 3. If you've got any questions, leave them in the video comments box. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next vid.